we're having to find new and creative ways to do professional development. So this seems to be the best way that we found and we will be doing even more of them. In addition to professional development, we offer so many things that can support your business. Um, if you're interested in networking, tomorrow morning at 8.15, there'll be a Zoom networking meeting that we do that we hope you might consider joining. And also go to our website at any time to find resources about the COVID-19 problem that we're having or any of our events that we are now doing mostly online. Just reach out to us if you've got any questions. We'd be happy to answer um, questions or put you in touch with the appropriate people. I do want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors for our Chamber to Community series, which is our professional development series that the Chamber is doing. Cox Communication um, has been our sponsor from the get-go. Aloft Hotel was hosting our events when we were doing them on site. Java Dudes Coffee was providing dinner for us and Pratova Signs. And then, of course, a special thank you to the team from Blue Zoo Creative for your expertise and for presenting to us tonight. And again, thank you all for joining us. And I'm gonna turn it over to Karen, I think really quickly before okay. Eric takes over. Yeah, hi, hi everybody, I'm Karen Wagaman. Um, I'm Vice President for Downtown Economic Development with the Chamber of Commerce. I know an awful lot of you personally, but I wanna welcome everyone for joining us. We are excited to have this opportunity. We actually have about twice as many registered as if we were actually on site at the Aloft Hotel. So we're glad you're joining us and hope that you get just as much out of this if you had the opportunity to meet Eric in person. So I will turn it over to Eric Huber. He is with um, Luzu Creative and he's um, got a lot of information to share to help you think about how to better brand yourself, not only now, but going forward when we're not in quite such challenging times. So Eric, thank you. Thanks. Karen and uh, she Shelly <laughs> um, for uh, the opportunity. And yeah, we're um, really excited. We, uh, we've we uh, got a little um, dog and pony show. We've got lots of questions I'm sure you guys are gonna have. Um, the, the approach that we usually take, I'm gonna stop saying we, the approach I take on this is uh, that, that I know you're gonna have questions. If you wanna enter them into the chat window, I can get to them in a little bit later. Um, I will pause a couple of times throughout to give you an opportunity. I'm also going to have a, uh, a link for you guys uh, to download in just a second. What I want to start off with first is just the idea um, for many of you, I know a lot are uh, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, you got your own business or you're in charge of a business. There's an old story I've, I've heard and it really rung true with me about how people see business owners or those of us who specialize in any kind of field, they often look at us as we're a, a man riding on the back of the lion. Everybody's looking over and saying, look at that guy. He's, he's, look how brave and strong he is. He's riding the a back of a lion. Meanwhile, the guy on the lion is looking around going, how the hell did I get on the back of a lion and how do I keep it from eating me? And so when we come at an approach like that, that's, uh, that's what we like to uh, try to approach. It's like, how do we gain control, this control that we, we think we might want to have, especially right now when we're all uh, got these uh, challenges with our businesses and how to reach the customers we want to. So I'm, uh, as said, I'm Eric Huber with Blizzard Creative. I'm Chief Executive Officer, I've been, or Chief Creative Officer, and I've been, um, we started Blizzard back in 2008. Uh, Colin Condray is the other co-founder. He's the chef, chief technology officer. And Justin, and I don't know if he's going to be on tonight or not, uh, but he's a, our creative consultant. Um, and he's been doing design. We've been we've known each other for years, even before I started Blue Zoo. <clears throat> for those who don't know Blue Zoo, um, we are a creative agency. We started off as simply a website company. We were actually built a Squarespace type platform back in 2008 and 9. But in Northwest Arkansas, and not having the sales acumen at the time, we did not uh, secure venture capitalists to uh, build that platform. 
Um, we focus on branding and identity specifically for web print and digital. Um, and we, we use everything from photography, video, and content. We do that with our pride uh, contractor community, two of which I think are on, Rachel and Gennett are on. Um, and they've done tremendous work for us. Um, so that's, that's our approach. What we do is we build teams on whenever we're, we get approached for a project. We build a team from our contractor community who's the best fit, who's the best skills, and we go from there. Like I said, we've been around since 2008. You can catch our website or give us a call at that number. So, warning, I have to always say this. Anything I might say may be out of date by tomorrow morning or even after we finish this program. Probably not the big broad strokes, but some of the details may be a little out of date. Just be prepared. Um, if you'll give me a second, I'm going to check to see if anybody else has joined or is looking to get in. It looks like we're okay. All right. Everybody see the screen okay? You should be seeing a warning on the screen. You can just nod or whatever. That's fine. Thumbs up. Okay. Great. So I'm going to... Um, give you guys a link. We are recording this, so if you miss part of it or something blocks out, you can always um, find it again. What I've got next is a link to a PDF that's got some worksheets on it that we'll be using to go over. Okay, you have the warning screen back up again. We're going to go on. Uh, I want to talk about branding in general. So the idea was we have a, a we need a strategy. Now branding is a little bit different for uh, when people talk about it. Everybody immediately says, "Oh yeah, I need a I need a logo for my brand." Brand is much much more than that. And what we like to do when we approach brands, we have uh, these three kind of focus areas that we we work on. The first thing is we want to come up. What's the problem that you're solving for a customer that's looking for help? Um, we're all so excited to talk about what we can do, how we do it, and, and, and come from that approach. But really, everybody that's looking for what we have for them, they, they don't really care about us yet. If they've heard about us, they want to know more about us. But the first thing is, we got to address their problem. What does your product or service do that solves the problem? Then what is your approach as, how do you approach them with your, 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 with your company as a persona or the, the, how do you talk to them? What kind of voice do you have when you do that? And then, vis, and then the visuals, voice and style, uh, what does that rep your, re, represent your company? Um, I can, I can uh, mute everybody. Hold on just a second. I have some cool powers that I haven't done in a long time. Okay, I think I've got everybody muted now. I have no idea I'm going to unmute you, but we'll go, we'll hit that later. Okay. So the worksheet that I sent down uh, or that I shared with you pretty much has some of these same categories and you don't have to do them right this second, but as you're going through, maybe you make some notes, but the thing that we're talking about, what problem are you solving for a customer looking for help? Do you have a product or do you have a service? Which one do you focus on and what kind is it? Is it something that people are urgently looking for? Do you have a tow service? Um, do you have a, a salon? Uh, are you doing commission artwork? Are you serving food? And is it necessity or aspirational? In other words, you know, I need to get toilet paper. Or do you need, um, um, do you need, sorry, I was reading comments. Um, you need toilet paper or do you need, you know, a, a, a condo in Aruba? I'm assuming they have condos in Aruba. On number two, what's the approach that you have as a company or persona? Are you friendly and approachable? Are you very authoritative and specific, uh, humorous or serious? Or is there some other attribute that you, you work on? Now, some of you go is like, how does that, how is this affecting my brand? Well, brand is all about how you're perceived, how you stand out in the world. Um, when we think of big brands, we think of Coca-Cola, McDonald's, Nike, Apple. Um, they didn't become those overnight. They built up a, per, a, a, a whole character. Their brand is a character. And as a company, you can have more than one brand, but make sure you've focused on one before you start working on the other one. An example would be Tyson Foods, who has the big Tyson brand, but they have Tyson chicken, 
They've got um, right brand bacon. So they have a lot of other brands that they can use. Most of us in that are on this call, I think that I, I looked up had, um, were probably smaller organizations. Again, on number three, then the, what visuals, voice and style represent your company? Um, what kind of imagery are you using, you know, for photography, for icons, for colors, uh, for typography? What words are you using? Are they technical? Is it niche specific? Um, are you conversational? Are you very authoritative and direct? An attorney would have a, a much different tone than a kid's toy company. Uh, and then again, the style. What, what do you focus on as you put this brand out into the world? Are you very formal? Is it playful? Is it very modern and clean? Is it classical? Um, these are the things you want to kind of write out. So I'm going to unmute, um, unmute all for us. Well, I don't want to unmute all. Can um, someone just unmute themselves once? And uh, Karen, can you unmute yourself and, and, or does it stay muted? Yes, I just unmuted myself, lower Great. left corner. Great, okay. So if anybody has a specific question at the moment, go ahead and ask, and then we're gonna go on to the next sheet in this series. I give about 10 seconds. Okay. All right, we're gonna go on to the next page then. I promise I'll get a little bit more exciting. <clears throat> give me a few seconds to get the groove going on. Now the next part I wanna talk about is what you really have to remember. You are not the hero of the story. You are the guide that helps the hero on their journey. Now I'm showing you two things on the screen. One is Joseph Campbell in his book, A Hero with a Thousand Faces. This is the process that we use to build most of the, the brand work that we do. I've been studying the hero's journey, which has been, I mean, he wrote it years and years ago, and I've been using that as a guide to build people's brands uh, for years, probably at least eight years we've been working it this way. Two year, or three years ago, Donald Miller came out with building a story brand. He's got an entire program and a method that you can use to build a, a story brand as well. Now, what is a story brand? I'm gonna show you on the guy on this, on this next worksheet. But the whole thing is that we all have a journey we go on. And what he came up with is he studied mythology. Joseph Campbell did, not Donald Miller. Donald Miller st studied Joseph Campbell. Uh, he, Joseph Campbell actually studied the mythologies of the world and discovered there was a common thread in most stories uh, around a hero and it basically the hero would start someplace with uh, with a call some call to adventure he, he was living in a normal world had a call to adventure and from there he accepted or declined from there he would go into the mystical world where he would have guides he would have sometimes a special magical items to help him on the way and he would face his most uh, uh, inner demons and then from there, he would find the, the boon, the golden boon that, would, that solved his problem. And he would try to return back and do this magic flight back to the real world where he was in the same place, but now he's got all this new knowledge and tools. So the idea is that you take your customers through the same journey. They are coming to you because they have a problem. And that problem, they can either use your product or not use your product. If they choose to use your product, you're the guide that's gonna take them through and solve their problem in such a way that their life is gonna be better and they're gonna come back to the real world with this new knowledge, this new tool, this new service that they've used uh, or the new product. Think of it really easily as how hard was it the first time you had to change a tire? It might not have been hard for some of you, but it was hard for me. Now, it just irritates you. You can change the tire, no problem. It's just irritating and it's either freezing cold or sweaty. It's never a, a perfect weather when you have to change your tire. So this sheet kind of goes over uh, what was great about uh, the Donald Miller's building a story brand is it kind of put into a process um, some of the things that we were already doing at Blue Zoo but the way they word them, the way they do them, um, it, it works out really well. And so it's kind of, uh, you can actually go to his site and, and take a, create your own um, sheet if you want to. But just going down through the list, 
you start talking about what problem do they have and what do they want. And this is, is much more than just um, their, I need a, a, I need a roll of toilet paper. Um, it, it's, it's, it, it's usually a problem, um, I should try to pick up, when people come to us, let's say for Blue Zoo, they usually have one or two different problems. One, they're ready for an update of some sort, or two, um, they've got a problem that either they don't have the time in, uh, to do the project, to get the branding and imagery and message out, or they have worked with somebody who has left them high and dry, and so they need to, to find somebody that they can trust. And that is also one of the big things that you want to consider about a brand in general, is that we're trying to reduce the trust cycle where people will trust you that you have the solution for them. Now, how do you help them and let them know that and understand that you've got the solution? Well, that goes through case studies or examples or testimonials. Social proof is a huge winner when it comes to uh, anything, um, when it comes to your business. Uh, research done back in the 1930s by the combined insurance company showed that door-to-door -door salespeople had a much better chance of closing a sale on their policies if they could name a few other people in town who also had the policy. Sometimes it would backfire because they didn't like the person that they named, but they would basically say, hey, perhaps you know Bob or Janice or Sally or the, you know, the, and occasionally it would be a top official that would have a name and they go, I know that person, they do business with you? Well, I guess I can trust you then. So if you can find ways of building trust through um, testimonials and or uh, other social uh, means, social proof, that's, that's great. But you have to help them understand, you, under, you have empathy with, for them, what they're going through, and otherwise show them you have a solution. Now, what is the solution and how do you share that for their journey? So here is where you take them through the steps. In the hero's journey, there is a series of steps or challenges that the hero must go through. So think about your own clients or customers what do they have to do in your process or through your particular um, business to get them to the point? I mean, it might be as simple as buying a product, but it might be that you have to have several meetings with them to, to get to the bottom of things, to get them to take notes, to organize, so on and so forth. So having that process will help guide them and show them, oh, I just have to do these 10 things and then I'll be in a better position than I was before I started working with them. Or three steps. Um, then you got to state what a call to action is. What is it that you want them to do? Um, you might want them just to pick up the phone and call. Um, you might need um, them to fill out a form. On our particular website, over the years what we've found is we have a very complex five page get started form. I say very complex. It's really just lots of questions about a person's business, what they need, and especially if they need a, a website built as well. And it, it's become that long because what we've discovered is when people said, hey, I need a website, can you call me? That never, ever closed a deal, like ever. Usually they just wanted to say, hey, well, I want to do this, but I got to use a credit card and can you give me a refund? I'll pay you more and then you can send me the money and that those are scams. So what we did is we just made a longer form. And so most of the people that fill out that, we have a, a, about a 40% close rate on those because they're specifically looking for exactly what, what they need. And we guide them through the steps of, of answering the questions. Um, the next thing that you want to talk about is how is this going to affect them, impact them when they win, when they finish, when they get the service or product that you've, you've imparted upon them. Um, and alternatively, what happens to them and what will life look like if they don't use your product? So this is in the hero's journey is that call to adventure or resisting the call to adventure. Does life get worse for someone if they don't? use your service product or does it get better? We all hope that it's gonna be better, that's the plan, or we wouldn't be selling or doing the thing that we're doing. 
And then last, how are they changed through this journey? And that's where the testimonies kind of come in again. How do they feel before and then after using your product or service? Um, looks like Karen added the referrals and testimonials become a huge selling tool as people go to social media and ask for referrals from their peers. Exactly, especially on LinkedIn. Thanks, Karen, that's good. So I'm gonna open it up because you might have some questions here. Um, please ask if you have. Uh, I know this is a two hour session. Most of the time when we, I do these uh, kinds of workshops, I try to give plenty of time for people to ask questions. If not, I will ramble on and talk about things that are branding for you. I have a question. This, All right. this is Karen. Um, you mentioned that on your website, you have that questionnaire. And right. I would think whether or not somebody is looking for your services that taking a questionnaire would help them think about all those things that maybe they haven't thought about. Um, exactly. So is that something that's readily available on the website? Do they have to ask for it? How well, do people on, see, see those on, questions? On our site, you just go to get started. There's a button that's like get started. We have a general contact form. Um, we encourage when we work with clients, especially when they have websites, we encourage a similar tool. Now we have a, a customer, Brown Boys Roofing, they actually prefer to get a phone call. He has a contact form with a couple of questions, but most of the time he just wants people to pick the phone call. So if you look at their website, everything says call. Um, he just closes better, he can answer questions faster, um, and he's got several people that do so. Um, there are people who are more consultants or uh, higher end services. Uh, one of the, I'm going to share about three case studies with you guys here in a little bit. Um, one of those actually has a questionnaire styles uh, for their, because they're a business to business type service. Um, we also work with nonprofits. Nonprofits have a, a certain um, need that's a little different um, that they need to, to serve the people that they've become a nonprofit for, of course, they also need to recruit volunteers and they need sponsors and donors. So they actually have, that's what's tricky for nonprofits is they actually have three target markets. Whereas someone who needs um, a disinfectant spray will just go to a website and get the disinfectant spray. Um, so any questions about these questions or things? So these worksheets you can use to kind of fill out, brainstorm. Um, there are so many resources on the web, of course, but what I wanted to do is kind of give you a guide to start thinking about this approach for your, um, for your own brand. Very quiet audience. Is there anybody? Oh, we got another person that would need to be admitted. I just let them in. Okay. No, really, you guys can ask questions. All right, so a lot of people come to us and they wanna know how are you gonna do the visuals? What's it gonna look like? What's my brand gonna look like? What are the pictures gonna look like? What are the logos? What's the colors? So I have actually done a whole separate um, piece about graphic design and the importance of it. So I've, I've got a link here. If you just go to um, it's a presentation I did, actually Rachel's seen it. Again, it may have seen it, I can't remember. Um, it was just called Get Them in the Fields. It was at WordCamp 2017, WordCamp Fayetteville, slideshare.net slash Eric Huber USA. There are several of them. They date back several years, but the, that's one of the most recent ones. And that's where if you really want to dig into the elements of the brand, the logo design, the typography, the photography, um, that one's that slide presentation has a lot of that information. Um, we might have extra time if we want to go over that. We might be able to do that. But the idea is that there's there's a lot of color psychology. There's a psych. I mean, you, you want to look at your particular audience. We we kind of talked about that at the very beginning. You know, what problem are you solving for a customer looking for your help? So when we're saying who needs your help, who are those people? How do you get in front of them? Um, where do they live? I mean, what do they do on a daily basis? For, for us, um, usually it's a company organization or an entrepreneur who is, um, they just don't have the time anymore or they don't have the team in place. Sometimes um, 
it's a, it's a creative director who's been tasked with a huge volume of work, but can't do it. So they hire us and we kind of work with them. Um, and we create their team for them temporarily until they get the project done. So um, that other slideshow, we, we, if we have time, we can, we can pull that up. But otherwise, uh, you have a link to it, just slideshare.net slash Eric Huber USA. All right, any questions before we go into some case studies? This might help explain kind of an approach and why um, we go through these steps. Uh, and what it what you guys might do. And Matt, in fact, if someone is interested just to talk about your own personal brand or project that you may be working on and want some ideas or, or how to uh, go through that, those pro that process, um, I'm happy to take one or two. I think we're going to have plenty of time. So I want to go through just a few of the projects we've worked on. Um, let me go to a grid view here so I can see more people. Does anybody know who, or has anybody heard, wow, there's not a lot of people on video. You guys are all hiding. Oh, you're all at home probably have kids in the background. <laughs> you know, um, I know uh, my uh, grandkids are, they've already tried to sneak in once, but I had the door barricaded. Grandpa win. All right, so um, Arkansas Crisis Center came to us. Um, they had a kind of a unique problem. Their, their branding was a Band-Aid with distress type talking about how Arkansas crisis in blood red. Um, and, and, and people loved it. They made stickers out of it. They passed around. They had flyers. Um, but the problem was, psychologically, a Band-Aid does what? It, it covers up a, a little bit of a, a, a little scratch or a little cut. And it's kind of like a little quick patch and just, it's not meant to last. So what we did was um, they knew they needed more volunteers. They needed more donors. They needed to reach more people that needed the help. They originally um, uh, started back in 1985 in Rogers, uh, at the Rogers, when Rogers High School had a rash of, of teen suicide. And so they've got a helpline and they really needed to make things more vibrant and hopeful instead of this little temporary thing that covers a boo-boo. So we, we, uh, we went and looked at everything and did interviews with the staff and some of the people that volunteered. And we kind of learned a whole different story. So we, we uh, ripped the Band-Aid off and gave them a whole new look and feel. We used more vibrant colors. Um, we discovered during the process that the um, that they they were doing a lot, not a lot more than just suicide prevention. If someone had a problem, um, it could have just been they didn't know if they were going to pass their fi their final test. There were people just kind of freaking out. So what they did, they've been doing is helping people learn to find resources when they are in a crisis. And by doing that, they slowly have been removing the crisis in people's lives. They don't have to deal with crisis. They have resources they can go to. They have something, someone to call. And so by removing the, the C in the center, we're removing the crisis in people's lives. And that's subliminal kind of like the FedEx arrow forward logo are in their logo. But the idea was, uh, and, and we presented that to their, their board, um, all of their staff and everybody could get behind it. So from there, we worked on, you know, materials that they would need, call for help. Just real simple, let's have a conversation, not just call us and we'll take care of things, but it's more of a conversation. All of the elements we used for um, their business cards, postcards, envelopes, letterhead, had the same vibrant colors and tried to uh, instill hope. Even their website um, had brighter colors, even though we didn't want to start throwing happy smiling faces because when you're depressed, that just ticks you off when somebody's just super happy and you're not. Um, so we wanted to show people helping each other and make it easy to find those uh, particular 
assistance. Any questions or thoughts that came to your own uh, brand or company? I have a comment. Please. I'm Laura. No, I like the redesign. I'm a designer myself, and I oh, think Laura. it's a great solution. Looks great. Thanks. Appreciate it. Love I like, the chat more. I like the thought process. I like the the C reversing out. I like the whole the whole story behind it. The color uh, that you chose. It looks great. Yes, and one other thing we found out is that the ribbons that go for all the different support. Uh, you know, breast cancer awareness is pink, and there's all these colors. Um, the the ones that we actually used actually had meaning for the staff that work there. So um, sometimes we even hit get luckier that that something like that pops up. Um, Eric, yes, Eric, can you see if Frank is in the waiting room? He sent me an email, and he's he said he's been waiting but hasn't been let in. I see a Frank on here. He's in. Oh, really? Um, there's no one in the waiting room yet. I just let two people in. Let me see if I can do a quick chat with him. I don't see him from my view. Oh, yes, I do. Maybe he hmm. needs to test his microphone and audio. Maybe. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Rachel, I just saw your comment too. Okay, I see Frank on here too. I don't see, I've got 25 people on here right now. I'll, I'll, I'll communicate with him. Go on. Thank you. Okay, I'll keep checking though. Let me know. It might be we put them in the waiting room and bring them back in, maybe. Yeah, you could try that. Okay, because he's not respond. Oh, he can hear us. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, Frank. Sorry, you're having uh, some challenges. Uh, are you able to see video? <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Yeah, band aids. Okay, any other questions on um, just that approach? Uh, we also have more detail writing and on our website about this particular um, uh, project. This next one um, is pretty recent. Uh, Allen Taylor Mergers and Acquisitions or Allen Taylor and Company as they're incorporated. Uh, has been one of our clients for quite a while. The uh, one of the owners, Barbara Taylor, started chatting with me. She's gone through the story brand process and, and approached me. She says, I really need to update my site. And I was like, okay. She says, well, I'm just sick of my logo. I want to update to that too. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and it is, you don't want to just willy nilly just change everything. Let's talk it out. So, uh, okay. Thanks Frank. Um, Frank just gave us a, a go ahead. So, um, so when it came to them over the past couple of years, they've been kind of letting their personality through. Now you think of mergers and acquisitions, you're talking about a person's business and you need to be extremely formal. And, and um, there's a difference between mergers and acquisitions and just business brokers. And at one point they decided we need to communicate this. And in fact, they were kind of upset that they were being seen as brokers. So we came up with an, an aggressive um, of advertising campaign for them with that particular brand they already had. Um, as you'll see, one was don't take it, don't take one on the chin. Working with business broker, broker can leave you bruised and broken. If any of you are business brokers right now, I apologize. We'll just move on. They, they've got some positive ones as well. Um, but the approach from their point of view was they were different. Now these were ads run in the business journal uh, over the course of a year, a new one every um, a new one every two months, I believe, but it ran several times. Uh, the one was that, so we got a deal. Uh, business brokers enjoy a story for caring about one thing, getting paid. Um, and so that was their approach. They just want to talk about what they did. Um, I'm not a big fan of the negative ads. We talked about it, and I said, like, well, you know, let's let's try it and watch what happens. We also talked them into some positive uplifting ads or aspirational. 
or the, hmm, what do I smell? No, I'm kidding. That's not really the, the idea. Um, so, so we ran a different set of them. And there, when it came to that magazine, that advertising in, in that particular, the business journal, it's more of a long play. We explained that to them. You're probably not going to get a bunch of phone calls right away. And in fact, they, they didn't really get a lot of response until after all the ads had finished. People remembered seeing them. And that was part of the idea is to keep going. Now, this was two years ago, back in 2000, three years ago, 2017, these were run. So anyway, we talked and it was time to kind of get their own personalities back in. Uh, more modern, more upbeat, more having their brand stand out from other mergers and acquisitions. Part of color psychology, um, you tend to see a huge number of businesses use the trustworthy color blue, which I'm partial to. Um, then you also have brown for brown or, or grays for grounding. Um, so it's, it's, it's this trustworthy color on top of a solid color. And that's where they were with their previous uh, brand was more in that blues and grays and, and anchors. But it was time for a change. So I said, there's still some things that you wanna do. And then she goes, well, I wanna be more vibrant, more energetic, more modern, not so formal. And so where we landed after a, several iterations um, was with this new, focusing on their and co. So part of their language is, and what else can we do for you? And what are the next things that you need to do? Um, now, when it came to building up that brand and coming up with the colors, um, when we develop out logos, we do the full color, we do a spot color, and we show what it can look like in black and white. So it can be used across all mediums. If you go to their social media, their social media icon is using a circle version of the ampersand. Now, on a personal note, they're each of the, the, the two, it's, it's, a, it's a couple who owns the company. Um, one of them, their alma mater is blue and the other one's alma mater uses orange. So it has personal meaning for them as well. Uh-huh, there you go. Thanks, Holly. Um, in this going in, this is why I wanted to show you some of the case studies because some of you guys might have been wanting to understand the visuals, how we approach that as well. Um, some companies will just pick two colors or three colors. Some companies use multiples. Uh, for them, we're using a primary set of colors. They're not actually primary colors, obviously. Um, and then secondary ingredients. Now, on this particular guide, I'm not sharing where it should be used, um, but sometimes we'll, we'll do that in the... Um... Uh, Alan asked, sorry, I just saw your question. Uh, how did you figure out how to get the ads to the Alan Tail target audience? Well, so most of the, the for, for mergers and acquisitions, their, their target are business, business owners. Um, part of it was a combination of they had already bought the ad space. And so we were trying to figure out who would be reading it and who would, who would it uh, appeal to. Um, we got great placement on those ads as well. Normally then the, the other question would be like, well, who is looking uh, for what, you know, if they're ready to sell or they're planning or selling or they're thinking of sell, um, it might've been a whole different advertising approach. Does that answer your question? Okay. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, their website is way, way different than it was. It's very, it uses, um, you know, gradients of color. It uses uh, big, bold headlines. Um, if you could see below the fold, they actually have a great statistic on their websites, alantaylor.co. Again, they bought that domain name before they talked to me. Um, so it actually, the, the M is not left off accidentally. But they actually have a 90% or 91% close rate when people work with them, whereas the industry averages about 20, 23%, I think. It's right below the fold there on the, on the screen. Um, any other questions on Alan Taylor? 
think I did see everybody now. Okay. The next one is one of our favorites. So I've shown you a nonprofit. The second one was more business to business. This one is more business to consumer. This one is Trick Dilly Taco. I know a few of you know them. If you haven't gone to their restaurant in Bentonville, well, you still can't. Anyway, you'll have to go, go through order online. Oh, Alan has, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, so the, the particular challenge for Trick Dilly was that they were, they started off as a food truck and they had great success in their food truck. Um, what ended up happening was they decided to open an actual restaurant with four walls. Um, they knew that they needed to do some branding, but they'd already started the process when they contacted us about what they could do next. The, um, their tagline, uh, as you'll see in Spanish at the top, is not your father's tacos. At which point I said, what's wrong with my dad's tacos? I happen to like my dad's tacos. Chef Troy turned to me and goes, yeah, but I bet he just gave you meat, cheese, and lettuce, didn't he? And I was like, yeah, I did. So Chef Troy does, um, you know, one of their particular tacos is a pork dilly taco. And that taco is made with, uh, uh, based around the pork chops and applesauce phrase. It's got slivered gr Granny Smith apple slices on barbecued pork and some sort of cheese, uh, Gutierrez cheese, I believe. Anyway, um, but the thing was, how do we reach more family oriented in the area um, instead of just this rough uh, uh, look? And we actually, played around and came up with a more streamlined fun. Now it turns out Dilly refers to Chef Troy's daughter. Uh, um, her, the, her nickname is Dilly. And she was playing one day doing something and it's like, hey, sh let me show you another trick. Let me show you another trick. And so they started talking and they said, hey, show us another trick, Dilly. And that's how they get, came up with their name. So we worked with it. Um, Content came up with the, the phrase, well, these are kind of tricked out tacos. They're gourmet tacos. They're, they're definitely aimed towards the foodies who are looking for something different. Now, their whole interior design of their space was wood, metal, um, and it was kind of a little cheeky, kind of funny. Chef Troy's hilarious. Um, so what we ended up doing was we did photo shoots, we did video, we did all the branding, some new t-shirt designs. Um, I don't have the video on here, but I can share that separately. Um, but through the photo shoot, um, even some of the photos we did before we started working, uh, there was a particular shot where we had just a picture of their counter. And I said, hey, hey, why don't you kneel down in front of that and, and point? No, actually, some the, uh, one of our guys was pointing at the wood, how cool the wood was. We got a picture of it. And I was like, that would actually be a great place for a sign. So we mocked up. Uh, the sign in Photoshop, showed it to them. They liked it so much, they had one made. So we had photography made showing people actually eating there. We pulled in a bunch of contractors, got to come in and we fed them and did photo shoots. Um, the branding we did for table tents, for postcards, for signage, um, and the, of course the website. Uh, you can see it's all consistent with this kind of distressed look. Um, the lime greens, the dark greens. And there's Chef Troy handing you his, one of his gourmet mini tacos, because the regular tacos are huge. Okay, before we go into branding within your budget, <laughs> any questions on the trick dilly? Um, I'm not seeing the uh, comments. Oh, here you go. Yeah. Huh. So Kim Pease is asking um, about them showing their success rate. Is it negative, say, what the actual national average is? Ours is 98%. National average is 2%. I was told it's not believable. Yeah, I would say if you were doing that number, it might be. Uh, I think the 20 to 90 range is probably a little more believable. 
but I think as long as you can back it up someplace, um, on the Alan Taylor website, there is a link or a path at the bottom of the website that you can actually go and, and look that up. Uh, we don't make it super easy for them to go check it out because we don't want them to leave the site right away. But if somebody is wanting to know, um, you can show something. It's not just you saying it, there's somebody else saying it. If you want to see our average, here's, wh here's where we base ours out of. And so uh, it probably just be the, the, way, um, the way you approach it. Um, one of the ways they they're, we're working on a new, um, a new graphic for them at the moment is showing that statistic that how many businesses fail within the first few years and then how many by the time 10 years has passed how many actually successfully sell uh, we're trying to work on a graphic it's it seems like it'd be really easy to do but those are they become huge numbers and so it looks really like you said it looks bad all right um, Holly's got an idea for you. <laughs> That's good, Holly. Um, and then Alan. Yes. Yeah, so that's one thing that I think uh, one of the last slides I'll have is just talking about consistency in your messaging. Um, that's um, having consistency in your brand messaging because if you're if you figure out who you're talking to you can start saying the same things now what's going to happen to you is in three you know a year or two years down the line you're going to be going oh i hate this picture i'm so tired of seeing this picture but you have to remember that other people don't see it as much now there's ways of freshing up your your branding and that can be done with like advertising campaigns or different marketing campaigns where you're promoting something new. Um, but using some of the same elements for multiple years, you probably don't want to go past three years, maybe five maximum. Um, I can tell you while working at Tyson Foods in their corporate communications department, I was so sick of this one cut, this one plated, um, green beans, chicken, and, and corn on the cob. I still have it burned in my brain. But the fact was that not everybody got to see it, especially when we were opening different markets. So that's one thing you're seeing it all the time, but your customers, because once you have a customer, they're probably not going back to your site that much, or they're not seeing your materials that much. They might be hearing from you. So you can use those things. So don't worry about mixing it up too often. It is for social media, you'll want to, to, to freshen things up, but you can find that niche, find that suite of images or, um, or in one setting, you could do a bunch. In fact, those trickily pictures were taken two, two and a half years ago. There's still photos we haven't used yet that are in there, uh, in the queue to be promoted on, uh, on social media and some, um, uh, flyers, uh, door, door hangers soon. So yeah, good questions. Um, so going on then, if there's no more questions on that, we can always come back to it. Now this is kind of an overview. <clears throat> there's so much you can do on your budget. Um, I know we all have different budgets. Some of us have, we want to save money as much as possible. Um, and when it comes to, to marketing and advertising and branding, you want to do things that you can, that are affordable and make sure you're measuring the things that you do. If you send, if you post something on social media, how many people actually responded to it? Pay attention through your whole social media account, how many people are responding? Oh, look, they're all responding when I put a picture of a puppy dog. Hmm, I do web design. How am I gonna put puppy dogs on every single post that I do? Obviously not gonna do that, but by noticing that, maybe you can find something else to, 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 to use for social media that's, that can then be tied back into your brand. So, like I said, uh, if you missed the very first slide, warning, anything that I've posted here could be out of date already. Um, but there's just a few ways that I know. Some of us have a lot more time than we've got resources to spend. Some of us have way less time and we've got not necessarily a huge budget, but we definitely can afford to do something else. Uh, the biggest thing is, is capturing, that, uh, capturing that as people come through 
that respond to any of these. So free, like I said, it's you've got all the social, social search engine platforms. You can update your listings on Google and Bing, on Yelp, on um, just there's hundreds of them. Somebody I met with the other day said they actually told me that we might have more uh, leads if we would make our contact form shorter. And I said, we've actually made it long on purpose, but thank you. Um, the, um, they also said, well, you know what we could do? We could get you back to the top of your search, the search engine. If we just go put you on 2000 social media platforms, I'm like, what? I'm not doing that. Um, not that that's bad. It just depends on what kind of traffic you're wanting. I could go buy 10,000 followers on Instagram, but none of them are probably going to be my clients. So, but getting yourself so you can be found is key. Um, obviously use social media, duh, it's a big duh, but make sure you're using the right channels. Don't try to do all the channels. Pick, pick two, pick one to start. Now, if you're a professional in a professional field, a business to business, you'll probably want to spend a lot more time on LinkedIn and connect with people there. If you have a product or service and trying to connect more with people, um, Facebook is great. You can also do video. You can do um, ads there too. Um, for Instagram, if you've got a product, if you've got a lifestyle, if you, um, something along that line, it's great to showcase. Uh, Trick Dilly's great because they've got food that they put all the time. But they, they're not using all those food shots on there. They, they, they do a lot of other stuff. Um, I gotta remember to keep checking the uh, chat and participants. Okay. So blogging. I'm gonna let Gennett talk about this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I know for, for blogging is very important. Content is still king. One of the biggest things we tell everybody for websites is search engines love content that's useful for people. Uh, recently, Google changed one of their algorithms. I think they changed it or they're getting ready to one of the two where they can actually, they're more uh, contextual. Whereas we all learn to go Tacos, Bentonville, um, you now can say, can I, uh, at Google or Alexa or whatever, or Siri, give me um, um, gourmet tacos in Northwest Arkansas or near me. You can just say near me. And it'll, it, there's a chance it's going to pull up Trick Daily. It's more contextual. You can speak more uh, regular language, not like I'm doing right now. Okay. So the last, uh, the last few here, um, a little, some SEO will do you good. If you've got control of your website, if you can go and make edits, there are plugins or add-ons that you can do whether you're on Squarespace or you're on a WordPress platform. For WordPress, I know there's Yoast and then there's a, um, there's another one for, um, uh, by a company called WPMU. Um, there's several of them out there. You just, it's, it's just their ideas that they're good for SEO and they'll guide you through how to write sentences and content that are useful so that when search engines or people are searching uh, online, they can actually find your, your website. Most of the, most of websites that are out there simply talk about you. They, people talk about themselves. They just put photos. They don't put m much content because they go, I hate reading all that stuff, or I don't want to talk all about myself. No, no, no. That's what people who are interested in buying, they need, they need to trust you. They need to find out who you are. They need to find out what you can do. Go back to that hero's journey. Give them that experience and guide them to the action that you want them to take. Makes a huge difference. Content and SEO helps with that. Speaking of talking about yourself, press releases. Press releases whenever you do something new, when you release a new product, when you finish a new website, when you finish a new, when you move in someplace, when you uh, finish working with a client and want to talk about it, them. Um, see if you can do something that would be a press release that can give the opportunity for your client that can give an opportunity for you. Um, what's great. You can hire a, a content writer like Gennett. Any other content writers in here? Sorry. Um, yes. Thank you, Karen. Press releases also generate free media because a lot of writers are like looking for content. Um, one of the things that, and it's great because you, if you, if you, if you haven't contacted Gennett or another content writer, you can talk in third person, Eric said to himself. Um, basically, you write your content that way. They, there's guides that show you exactly how to do it. It doesn't take too long. Um, I personally always get somebody else to do them because I know I'm going to mess it up. Um, typos. 
All right, join a community. This can be online and offline. There's always people in your niche somewhere. And when you join that community, uh, I know a couple of people on here, uh, when we first started, we got involved with WordCamp and the WordPress meetup groups because um, we were using WordPress almost exclusively. And we had a contact in Northwest Arkansas whose daughter actually worked with Automatic and was very connected to the uh, WordPress um, organization. Um, we helped as much as we could. We spoke for free. We uh, went to, to meetups. We shared information. And so people got to know us, and I've gotten to work with a bunch of great uh, web developers and designers because of it. Um, so you don't want to give away your best stuff, but you want to help as much as you can. There's a book uh, by a guy, uh, by the guy Gary Vanacek. He's a little rough. If you've watched any of his videos, he's all over the place. But his whole goal is he gives, 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 and then he asks for something and asks for a sale. And that's a great rule of thumb when you're even doing your own social media. Give, give, give information, be helpful, ask for a, a sale. Or ask, who do you know that needs something? That's a great softener. If you've ever tried to sell something to somebody directly, they always backpedal and put up a little wall right away. Uh, one of the big things you can always do when it comes to um, joining one of those groups and sharing information is simply just saying, hey, by the way, if you know anybody that, that needs some branding work or website, you know, just let me know, send them my way, I'd really appreciate it. Does two things, one, it goes, oh, they're not trying to sell to me. And then the second thing is, hey, why aren't they trying to sell to me? I might need that. So then they come to you and that usually works really well. Um, video and imagery. So as I know all of you have seen on Instagram, you got Instagram stories. Video is like one of the most consumed um, types of media there is right now. And all of us probably hate being on video. So you can always shoot other interesting things. It doesn't always have to be you in the camera. However, to shorten the trust cycle, you can show yourself. And by doing that, you're a real person, you're someone they can talk to, or they may just not like you at all, and then you don't have to worry about working with them. It's okay. Any questions on some of those free? And if you have another free resource or idea, please just throw it in net. I'd say I've got networking in a different space because generally you can go to a few things for free. Um, there are lots of free ones open, um, and Rachel Corpella can uh, share that link. Um, if she's on, again, she has her resources, lists all the networking events in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, that is one of the low cost ones. I know Business Networking Inter International, um, the other group I can't think of at the top of my head, that's the, maybe somebody can remind me. It's similar to, um, um, there's the link. Okay, Rachel sh shared the link, nwanetworking.com. Thank you, John. Yes, the mob. Thank you, Gennett. Uh, that's another networking group similar to BNI, a little less costly. Uh, those groups generally are small. And the idea is, if you're not familiar with them, that you, you don't sell to the people in your group. You sell through them. Um, one thing when it comes to branding is you don't have to just sell yourself. What you can do is align with others who have similar clients that you have, but they sell something completely different. That way you're not competing with them. You guys are working together to, to do more. Um, so going down that list, um, social media advertising is not too expensive. You can set a budget. One great thing for social media ads is using part of the story that you're writing, reaching out to the person that needs that help, and then run a $10 ad. Now you're probably not gonna see a huge number of results depending on your price point, depending on your product or service. Uh, you might have to spend $100 to see any results, whatever. The idea to keep in mind is how much does it cost? How much is a new client worth? If you get a new customer, how much is that client worth or that new customer worth? So for example, you get somebody that walks in the door, um, is when they come in the door and they buy one of your things, whatever your thing may be, um, how much do they spend? Do they stay around a little bit longer? Do they come back to you often? For us, <clears throat> ours has changed over time, but generally once we do one thing, we get to do more for them as well. And so what then, 
is your acquisition cost. How did you reach that person that walked through the door or called you or, or filled out the form on your website? So if you run $100 of social media ads and you get one sale and your price point is $150, you just made $50 profit. Um, if, you're, if, you, if you run $1,000 in social media ads or Google ads or whatever, um, and your, your price point is $10,000, you still made a great profit. Now, you might not have made enough much profit as before, but you see where I'm going with that? Hey, we got some more comments over there. Thanks, everybody. And then we're um, also, when we finish this, I am, I think I'm still recording this. Um, the, um, I'll also have the chat will be recorded so I can share that as well. Okay. Uh, local news interviews, that kind of goes along with the press, um, press releases. However, sometimes they want you to, if you buy an ad, you get an article. It just depends. There's some, there's some magazines, not the business journal. It's not like that, but there are some other magazines, small publications, um, e-newsletters. Um, one of the things that we talk about for people, you, it takes time, might get some, someone to write, might cost you some photography, but you can send out information constantly to, to, to drive traffic. Now, you want to send them someplace where you can capture that information. The best place is your own website. And if you've been doing a blog, you can use that a part of that blog and put it in your newsletter and it sends them back to your website. The next part is um, social, uh, social media influencers. I know that Moxiox Printing Company, and I don't know if you're familiar with them, they're in Springdale slash Tawny Town. They um, decided to work with an influencer who had a huge audience they made something special for that influencer that they could also make for other people. They put that in front of the influencer and the influencer broadcast it and sales skyrocketed. Now the only deal with that is if you're doing something that just gives you spikes of sales, is it sustainable? That means you're going to have to constantly do that, but it could work if you just need a, a slight boost and you have somebody that you can talk to. Sponsor an event, create an event. Now that is, I say low cost, it can be low cost. Um, it just depends on how, that can move from a, lo a low cost to a high cost, depending on how complicated it could be. But if you have a product or service, you wanna get out in front of people, you wanna do a big promotion, uh, you can get out more in front of more people that way with your brand and share the message. Vehicle graphics, that's part of the branding, the logos. Vehicle graphics, I'm not talking about the big wraps, just simply glass, or door magnets. Um, the cost nowadays is not that expensive. If you have your own personal vehicle you, you're using, magnets are probably a great idea because then you just take them off at the end of the day and drive around and your spouse won't be upset that you've got this graphics on the car. In my case, it might've been a huge monkey at one time. Um, then moving into, okay, I got a question over on, does the name used in setting up your domain generate search in Google? Well, so that's a good question, Ilyana. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. If I butchered it, I apologize. Um, it's still good to have a domain name that, that, that matches keywords, but I wouldn't put that at the top of the list. Um, you've got, I mean, you've got Google is... Uh, my my answer would be if you can do it, it's going to be really hard nowadays. Unless you're and, and if your product has an, a quirky name, that's probably going to be okay because then it goes with your brand, or your your product name, your domain name, and then people searching for it will find it and it'll also uh, match up. So I wouldn't put that at the top of the list, and it's going to be harder and harder because just more and more of the words are being used. All right, good question. Uh, high cost, like I said, Google ads, it depends on who you're going up against. If you're going up against casinos, you're gonna lose. Unless you have a casino yourself, you're, you'll be fine. They spend a lot of money on Google ads. You're hardly ever gonna be able to beat them. And that's the thing, you just have to look and see when you search for your, what, you, what service or product you provide, if you do a search, go to incognito mode, however, otherwise you've already been tagged and it knows that you're here in Northwest Arkansas. I think incognito still knows where you are because of the, uh, the internet IP address. Uh, but basically you, 
you can do a quick search and see who pops up in ads because someone's paying for ads in your field. Usually it's like a national uh, company that is paying for ads across the board. So the big thing is you do more uh, content, you'll eventually beat the people that are paying for the ads. Radio and television, there are a ton of different uh, programs out there ranging from $1,000 a month on up. Uh, I know one program we were looking at, local radio station offered to have the company be the blank of the, of the, uh, the official blank of, of this station. And um, depends on how much you have to spend, but they'll do radio spots, they'll share your stuff on social media. There's a bunch of things that you can get starting at around $1,000, $1,500. Magazine ad campaigns, like for the Business Journal, they will, they will be a little more pricey, um, usually anywhere between um, six and $1,200 on up per month uh, or per, uh, per issue. Depends on how many you run and, and what the sequence is. Trade shows are great if you have a specific niche. Uh, I don't know how many might be interested in trade show, but you gotta travel, you gotta have stuff in your booth, you gotta have giveaways. Um, that's a whole different thing. Direct mail, of course, you gotta cut, you got printing, you got postage. Uh, it's very effective, but it's about a normally a two to 5% return. So you gotta send out a lot. Giveaways and promotions, again, that'll give you a boost, a spike. I can tell you when we first started, we gave away three entire websites and no one claimed them and no none of y'all can have a free website sorry can't, can't do it um i will give advice but that's billboards um they can be pricey but there are some new programs out there uh that will let you rotate in and out since they've got the digital billboards any questions or other ideas Making sure your brand is consistent. You can change over time <laughs> as your business changes. Ours has changed. We were bluesy websites when we first started. And for quite a while after that, then we switched to bluesy creative, mostly because we were focused on websites and then we got some extra people in, could focus on more creative work. And then uh, back in 2016, I believe, is when we uh, came up with, um, um, with uh, several people who are here, started the Pride, the, the Blue Zoo Pride of Contractors. And from there, then we moved into being a creative agency. Uh, somebody asked about Facebook Pixel and texting. So that's good questions as well. Um, I have not worked with the Facebook Pixels. I can't speak to that directly. I know that we installed them on many people's websites for tracking to see if you're, if they're moving from uh, Facebook to the website. Um, texting, SMS texting, uh, we've been doing that for Trick Daily for a while. They've grown, um, they're over a thousand um, uh, people on their list at the moment. I can tell you that they, it runs somewhere in the 70 to 150 for having 2,000 Per month, I think um, the the um, there's 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 a dozen um, the things to look for in the texting is how many how many can you send out uh, is it a dedicated number uh, one things we did run into uh, as you guys know with the coronavirus and all the restaurants shutting shutting down the restaurants were allowed to give people liquor to go um, it, if they actually served it at their restaurant. And that's normally something they couldn't do. We sent out a text message, Trick Dilly was able to give a, if you bought six tacos, you could get a six pack of uh, uh, bike rack, I think it was bike rack uh, beer for $9 more. And <laughs> we got flagged and said, no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. And the reason being is, the text your phone number to this number, I think it, there's this 555-888, there's, um, anybody can do it. So a child under, someone under 18 or 21 could uh, get that uh, text and offer them liquor, which you can't do. Although, don't they advertise that on TV? Anyway, that was what, one of their rules. Um, I think simple texting, I'll have to look that up, is theirs. There's simple text, there's simple texting. Basically, you just need to look at what does their platform look like? How hard is it to use? 
Um, uh, a text message of like a Twitter 140 characters is one credit. If you send a photo and the message, it's three credits. So you can eat up credits like crazy. So you're, you're, if you're wanting to send out something weekly, you're probably looking at uh, 150, 250 a month maybe, uh, somewhere in that, that neighborhood. But it's also a shared, um, it's also a shared number versus a dedicated. And the dedicated will be more expensive. For example, if you text, you see where it always says, text trick dilly to 555-8888. Yeah, if you text um, beer to 555-8888, you'll get a different response if someone on that number has a code word that, that can be used. This is the point where I go, did I help? Did I answer the question? All right, no, really, questions, more questions? You guys can actually say something. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a couple of links. Um, I'm not gonna end it, we'll keep talking some more. Uh, I can share some more information. If you guys wanna okay. see more on the design, I can show that to you, but um, um, yeah, that's, there's the slide share. You can find a bunch of them I've done, and you've already gotten that PDF, I believe, to download. Eric, can you talk about inbound marketing? I know the basic concepts, but do you have any clients that use that? Yeah, we've got done several uh, clients that use uh, inbound marketing. So inbound marketing is, if you just think from the marketing approach, you're trying to get people to come into your store through traditional mediums or even through uh, advertising online. Uh, when that term came about, I started laughing. I'm, I'm a little older and so I've been around the marketing graphic design uh, business for a while. I was like, inbound marketing, isn't that just marketing? But technically what you're doing for inbound marketing is you're driving people to a website to capture their information, specifically an email address. Once you have, email is still great, that's why I was saying uh, e-newsletters e are kind of a low cost. Um, you create a landing page where you can give someone coming to your site or to a landing page uh, system. There's several systems out there that just do landing pages. That then you give them something and you ask for their phone number or for their email address and maybe first name. You're not going to give them much, but you're going to get. They're going to get something that they need help with. Now, you can, from that point, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take that information and put them into a funnel. The funnel can be very complex. There's programs called um, um, HubSpot. There's Infusionsoft. Uh, I'm sure there's about six other ones out there by now, probably 100 other ones. But the idea is that you've just created somebody that might buy. So we look at, when we look at buyers, we look at someone who's ready to buy now. We look at someone who's looking to buy. And then someone who's just not interested, they're just never gonna buy, no matter how many times you show your product. Um, think of about somebody who needs to buy a car. There's usually two reasons you need to buy a car. One, your car just died and you gotta get a new car. Or two, it's time for an upgrade, your car's old, it's just, it's fine, but you're ready for something new. That person is not in a hurry, they're gonna look around for a big deal. Someone whose car just broke down, they're, they need it now. So when we look at even direct mail, websites, landing pages, inbound marketing, what you're trying to do is get in front of the person that might be buying or is ready to buy now. HubSpot, I've looked at their system twice. The first time I looked at it, they wanted us to be an inbound company, inbound marketing company, and I didn't want to just do that. Plus at the time it was like $1,200 a month and that was 10 years ago. It's like, no, nah, I don't know. Uh, I've looked at it recently, it's, it's much more affordable. They got some new programs, um, but the idea is, you give something to get that information. The more valuable information you're giving them, the more you can ask for. Think about it from your own, own point of view. If someone says, hey, um, uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a free website, how much information would you be willing to give me if I'm gonna build this entire website knowing what you've seen from our other website? I might be able to get quite a bit of information from you probably not your social security number or anything like that. 
Um, but you might, you know, there's, there's other things that you, you'd share or it's valuable. So the idea is you want to give them that. So then you put them in a pipeline or a funnel system. If they've, if they've downloaded this one document, then they're interested in, um, uh, let's just say, um, well, think of, uh, of a couple of programs. Say you're a, a person who provides a service, you do classes, and you've got um, self-paced, um, a self-paced program. From there then, the first person might just be interested in talking to you and getting some quick information in your expertise. They don't really wanna hire you. And so from there then, you put them in the pipeline and this funnel system that drips out another three to five more emails keeping them in the loop so that when they finally do want to buy, you're top of mind. Going into a higher dollar valued um, uh, purchase, you have to make sure that if that person has purchased that, that if they're in any other, other uh, funnels, they need to be removed from it. So those systems become very complex um, where, or can be very complex or very simple. You could simply just share information, you get their email address and first name, you put them in MailChimp or Constant Contact, and then every month you send them something new. More complicated is you've got them in a series leading up to an event and you want them to buy a ticket or you want them to buy a year long package. I've got, we've got a client that does uh, their entry level stuff, they've got a ton of free stuff. They've got some entry level stuff at 300, they've got some weekend retreats for, three to 5,000, but they've got this flagship program that is a year long deal with a trip out of the country and it's like 70 or $80,000. Not right now because of uh, the coronavirus, but soon they will be back on track. Does that kind of answer the question? It was probably way longer than you, you needed to be. Yeah, thank you, that was good. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see, Rachel says, Talk about tools like Moz for your SEO might answer the previous domain question. Um, so I'm the branding guy and graphics guy. <laughs> Colin would be more the tech guy. He would keep track of the uh, more of the um, what kind of tools it is. There are, there are a ton of tools out there to test your site for keywords. Um, the 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 plugins for WordPress, like I said, uh, Yoast or the pro levels of anything are going to be great and kind of guide you through that. You can also go to someone who does that all the time. Um, I see uh, we've met with uh, over the past six years. I think I've I've met with about six or eight uh, different SEO people, and they all have different strategies. Um, so you really just have to talk to them and, and see if they if they are saying the right things and look look some stuff up for your for yourself as well um thanks alan oh he's already go oh alan thanks for coming or tuning in or being visible actually face and name that's good um lindsay asks uh how do you organize your case studies and what do you think is important to include so um Good question. The answer would be, um, probably the biggest thing would be to figure out what's, what's most relevant to people. Cause there's a lot of projects I've done um, where it was simply, you know, just, uh, it, it's not worth really talking about. I think basically is when you setting up a good case study is, you know, is, is it something that could be relevant to other people? Are other people going to have that problem? Thinking about their, that hero's journey, are other people going to have this same problem? So for the nonprofit, for the Arkansas Crisis Center, you've got an old brand, it's a little date, they've got new people involved, they're trying to get some, some traction, they, they, they can't. In fact, they actually asked us to help them work their, uh, it depends on the company or the organization, but they actually wanted us to work on their mission and vision which that was a very board oriented and uh, people had been with the comp with the organization for a while. We did work with them and they went with the slightly uh, changed um, vision. The, the whole removing the crisis in people's life, they, they couldn't quite get behind that because they wanted to focus on the aspect of education. So we weren't able to put that little phrase in their mission vision. We stuck with the, the organ, uh, the, uh, with the education aspect, but still 
we managed to sneak it in in, in a lot of other places because it was so relevant and we thought it was one of the most important things is how they actually remove the the crisis in people's lives so going on um you said uh um oh what's important to include so when i when we when we decide to start including a few case studies the biggest thing is you what's what's why they approach you what was their problem what was your solution um and how were things after the fact and hopefully you get a testimonial um we included because part of our business is working with teams and collaborating not that we're the only ones that ever collaborate but we work with our contractors we want to we've been trying to add them more in and put their names on the project when we get that case study so they can see um, part of our thing is um, and if you happen to see the um, the lion logo that we use it's made up of small triangles um, when it all comes together it's a it's called a tangram but the whole process for us was that each piece by itself each of us individually know we all know a lot um, and some of us have things that overlap. We have knowledge that overlaps, but when we come together, we make something none of us could have made if we hadn't all come together. And that's why we kind of use that. So that's one of the things we, we share is, is who all was on the team and helped make it uh, work. There's a bunch of case studies I need to do still, um, but that's kind of the approach. It's like, you know, who, who they were, what their problem was, what our approach was, um, and then, you know, what was the result and did they did we get a testimonial um so it's kind of that hero's journey so they had a problem how did we help them through it what did they get at the end and how did they feel so like i said we've inadvertently been doing the story brand process because we were already following the hero's journey on that paula uh and hopefully that answers your question feel free to shoot me a message my email is eric at bluezoocreative.com I'm not hard to find online. Uh, so great. Um, is there a good ROI on advertising during the coronavirus? I'm finding people are in a holding pattern for their insurance needs. Um, so one of the things when it comes to advertising and branding during any kind of downturn in the economy, historically, um, and that's probably one thing that we've, that I've always focused on is I've always looked back to see when things were similar, even though the media is different, our, you know, our electronics are different, um, you know, was there any pattern? I mean, come, somebody was talking about showing the little picture of everybody staring down at their cell phones. There's a picture from the 20s that shows all these people on a train reading newspapers. They're not talking to each other. They're all using newspapers, just a different medium. Um, so one of the things is the more you can be out in front of people, where they see you, they hear your name, they see what you're doing, that you're still active, the better you're gonna be seen after the downturn um, ends. Because you were consistent and you, you know, we all know everybody's got, ha is having some challenges. Now specifically on, on uh, which advertising is give, get people a call. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but what I would say is, if it's insurance needs, then who are the people that are looking uh, specific, what, whatever particular insurance uh, you're, you're helping people with, um, then sending out messages, not selling, but talking about challenges that people are having um, on social media. I know there's some limitations that you can't say certain things, so you just have to be careful with that. Um, in, in, in keep promoting that aspect, I, I would say. Um, what particular advertising, I, I, don't, I don't know if, if direct mail would be beneficial or not. You just have to think of different ways to get in front of those people who would be that target demographic that are gonna need that help, that need the help now um, and may need it afterwards. Um, what can you do for business? So Yana asked, what can you do if your business is not coming up in general searches, even though we were all, we were on all media plant forms, must know specifics in order for our company to come up. I might need a little more information on that, Yana, Eliana. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what you're meaning by that. Um, 
if you have more than one location, you are going to have more of a challenge. Um, the top company is going to have to give give that information out. Um, yeah, I might need you to message me about that. I'm not quite sure how to give you that answer. Um, any bargains in advertising right now? I haven't seen anybody drop prices yet, but I'm sure it's going to happen. Um, I don't know. I know just a couple of, of outlets uh, with the, the Democrat Gazette going digital. I have no idea how they're approaching theirs right now. Uh, Kim says Facebook Live answering questions on a regular basis has been helpful. Okay, cool. Hope that helps regarding the advertising. Good. Thank you, Kim. Okay, Laura, nice to meet you. Thanks for, sh she's already gone. Okay. <laughs> She'll get my message afterwards. Um, so yeah, so we're coming up on 7.30. I know this goes to 8. Uh, also know everybody has uh, uh, families at this time too. Um, if you have any questions specific, and Ilyana, if you want to email me that a little bit or just chat, I can, I can share it with the group afterwards as well. Um, yeah, I'm just not exactly sure on your question there. Basically though, when it comes to your website, you have to have content. You have to have content. You have to have content. <laughs> that is basically it. There's so many people just put pictures, a few words, and they don't share in for information. Um, on our particular websites, and it's different for different companies, but on our website, statistics show after the home page, which is always the highest, of course, people either go to the service product page or they go to the about page. They'll sometimes go to the about page first, then they go to the service page. So if they come to the home page, theoretically, the first thing you've got says, you've got this problem, man, can we help you? You know, you're basically sharing their problem and saying, we know what you're talking, we know what you're going through, give us a shout. If they go, hmm, this might be the right place, they're gonna say, well, who are these people? And they'll go to your about page and they'll read about you. If they like you and they sound interesting and they sound like you can, they can trust you, then they're gonna go check out your service and see if you have exactly what they need. If they, they don't go to about, they'll go to the service first to see if you actually can solve their problem, depends on what your call to action is. Um, okay, and so, yeah, so you just wanna guide people through that and make sure you've got tons of content, then double check your back end and see if you've got some, some SEO, search engine optimization. That'll help you pop up on search engines. Go to all your, like I said, the Google business, make sure you listen in those directories, so on and so forth. Good, thanks, Kim. Karen, Shelly, you guys have any, any other things? Um, like I said, if you've got any uh, specific questions, you can hit me up anytime. Um, I should be pretty responsive this week. If you'd emailed me today, would not have been responsive for preparing for a presentation. Eric, you are kind of breaking up, but I think we're probably to a point now that you've shared your email and um, we do have resources we can share with everybody tomorrow. If you didn't take time to download the PDF file from the notes, we can share that with you. And um, Eric said he does have the, um, this session recorded. So when he has that available, will that be on, on YouTube or how will you make that available to us to share? I, I'll probably have it on YouTube um, and put okay. it up that way, if that's okay with you guys. Okay, that'd be um, great. Unless you had it someplace else you wanna have it. And then I'll have the slide presentation. Of course, like you said, like you noticed, I said a lot more than showed, um, but I'll have that up on that slide share as well. Okay, and we can check with our marketing department. There might be a possibility of putting it on our chamber blog right sure. in addition to your YouTube or maybe a link or whatever. Oh yeah. Again, this is our first virtual um, C2C workshop. So it's, um, we're, we're working with this for the first time. We are excited for all the people that did take time out of their evening to participate and we're doing all we can to support small businesses right now. So we, we appreciate you, Eric, for helping us do that. Absolutely, my pleasure. I love sharing information. That's great.
Okay, well, I will send email to everybody. If you are on the call and um, you did not register and send your email to us, the, I've got Abby and Cliff and a phone number that ends with 5105 if they're still on the call. I'm not sure I have your email. You did not match up with my list of participants. So you can certainly call the chamber or send an email to Karen at rogerslowell.com and we'll make sure to get all these resources to you tomorrow. So I think that's all. Shelly, do you have anything you wanna share? Oh, and also tomorrow morning is the, um, the uh, networking event. So you can find that on the Chamber of Commerce calendar. You can see all of our events. We should have another um, virtual um, class coming up on the 28th of February. I'll try to get an email to you about that. It's not on the website yet, but it will be very soon. What time is it tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow morning at 8.15? Yes. Okay. So anyway, and I put that in the notes, um, the link to that, but it's also on the Chamber website. But people can check anytime. Cool. Hey, right. and uh, thanks everybody for showing up. I know most everybody's dropped off already, but this will be recorded. So if you have questions or you want to run anything, uh, uh, run anything by me from the worksheets, I'm happy to look at stuff. Uh, just give me some time to review. And um, like I said, love to share information, love to help small businesses. I've, I have, have been one and have grown and, and shrunk and grown and shrunk many times here. So that's just the nature of business. So everybody stay strong and stay healthy. Thank you. We appreciate it, Eric. Good night.